and welcome to a little bit of insight around moving community community survey today i'm joined by mike hill from legendnet solutions good morning mike how are you today morning dave i'm very good yourself yeah really good thank you so Thanks. mike the the moving communities community survey it sounds really interesting i think there's a lot of really interesting data and insight come about from a pilot but just give us an overview what is the community survey sure i mean what we're trying to address here is a long-standing problem in the sector and that's to find out how non-users of leisure centers and and in fact the wider community as a whole what they feel what their attitudes and perceptions are about yes leisure centers uh, that traditional way of providing active leisure opportunities but increasingly what they feel about the wider physical activity opportunities um, for active leisure within their community and traditionally as you know Companies such as ourselves have had to go out on the street and ask people face to face or Sport England uh, have their active lives survey, which is done using um, either post or, or telephone. All of these ways are quite expensive and time consuming ways of, uh, of finding out what your wider community uh, feel about these important issues. So the Moving Community Community Survey is an online survey that tries to address these problems and do it in a really simple, cost effective way. OK, good. Well, I noticed there on the screen it says pilot mm. survey. So I'm hoping that means that we're, we've spent some time learning from a, a short version of it. So talk to me about the pilot. What's it? How did it work and who took part? Yeah, absolutely. So. Here we, we approached um, six councils. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the councils uh, were run their, run their services in house as well um, to run a pilot because we re this is quite an innovative approach to surveying the community. So we really wanted to make sure that this idea that we had and it was mainly LeisureNet leading on this along mm -hmm. with Simon Shibley from Sheffield Hallam, their sports industry research centre. We'd came, came up this this idea of using an online survey, but doing it in a particular way. And we wanted to test it, trial it with six councils, operators from around the country. So you can see there, we had Hounslow, East Riding, Leeds, Pendle, Solihull and West Suffolk. You'll notice that there it's, it's a great range of councils, operators that we've chosen there. So geographically, they're spread around the country, but also really importantly, we've got some rural ones there, such as West Suffolk. We've got Leeds, which is obviously quite a big urban centre. Um, some of them have got significant areas of um, deprivation. Some of them have got significant, definitely diverse populations. So a really good selection of, um, of local authorities. And we ran this basically from June through to end of August this year. And this, what we're going to talk about, is the results of that pilot. Okay. All right. So give us some highlights then. What was the, what were the things that we found out? What um, what surprised us and what didn't surprise us? Yeah, sure. So you can see from the pilot, we had a total sample of 4,603. Mm -hmm. uh, the engagement from four of the six was very, very high. The questions that we've developed along with Sport England's uh, insight team cover these six areas. So mm -hmm. we've got current levels of physical activity. There's a little bit of overlap there with active lives and the sort of questions that Sport England have been asking for, for many years. Mm -hmm. um, we ask people about their physical act activity aspirations. So uh, are, do they consider themselves to be active? Would they like to be more active? What's stopping them? What would encourage, you, encourage them to be more active? We then move on to focusing on the indoor physical activity. Obviously, the local um, public sector leisure centre provision mm -hmm. is absolutely crucial to that. Look, um, there's a, about six or seven questions relate specifically to that. We then look at the outdoor, similar questions for outdoor physical activity. Um, and then we move on to two specific areas. So there are only two or three questions on each of these, but Every time we work with councils at the moment, they want to include active travel. It's mm. becoming you know, the wider active environment, how active travel fits into it and how it links with getting to uh, leisure centres is becoming increasingly important. So we've got mm. a nice little question set on that. And then finally, we've got uh, a few questions around children's and families, which really focuses on what's, what are the barriers to families with younger children exercising and other and what are the opportunities for encouraging them to exercise together as mm -hmm. a family so that's mm -hmm. that's the sort of the question set but just here here are a few examples of key findings mm -hmm. from that um from that sample across the six so, so this is the national 
picture, if you like. And so, for example, you know, 74 percent wanted to be more active. Um, we've only 80 percent uh, more active than they are now. We've only 80 percent saying they, they didn't. Mm. I mean, this is quite typical that around three quarters, whenever we go out and do these surveys, typically we expect to see three quarters of the sample coming back saying, yep, I'd like to be be more active. Um, and another question that we often ask, which is on the bullet points, is is whether people um, are, are aware of how active they should be. And, mm. and again, people are quite aware of how active they, they should be. Mm. They're quite aware that they want to do more. The, the key challenge is always moving people from that desire to be more active to actually taking the yeah. first the first steps or two. Second bullet point there is a classic um, barrier question. So 32% quoted cost as the main factor stopping them from using leisure centres. That's quite interesting because quite typically in the past over the last decade that we've been asked this question, it was always time mm. that came uh, number one with cost um, coming two or three. It seems now that cost is not surprisingly becoming more important, but you can still, still see that 27% stated lack of time. And that lack of time is specifically related to work um related pressures uh, more than home related pressures right. so that's quite interesting as well mm -hmm. and also what we've seen is um, an increase in the number of people saying that they're looking to exercise outdoors um, so 21 percent say that the main reason that they don't use leisure centers is that they are either they prefer to or are already exercising mm -hmm. outdoors and we saw mm -hmm. that go up as a result of covid and lockdown Right. with more people moving um, some of their exercise habits from indoor, from a traditional uh, leisure facility into, into the outdoors. Sure. Um, just to finish off the last two points, so how would people like to increase their physical activity? I think this is really fascinating because we can get a bit carried away with, with the potential of using outdoor spaces, mm. but still more people, significantly more people, 71% said they'd rather use indoor facilities versus 57% saying outdoor spaces or yeah. facilities. So we can't, that, why is that? I was talking about this with someone else in the sector. And I think this links into the lack of, um, it's partly about motivation, but it's all also about uh, where people feel comfortable exercising. And I think there's still a big chunk of people that aren't happy to go out walking, running or mm. cycling, but do feel more comfortable going into a swimming pool or into a gym or into mm. a group exercise class, particularly obviously during um, during uh, the winter okay. time, you know, people still you know I don't feel safe, don't like going outdoors. So the indoor leisure centre, you know, is by no means dead. Mm. We need to really still be focused on that because it's still more popular in terms of increasing physical activity in outdoor spaces. And spaces. And look at that figure for organised sport, only 12%. Mm. Perhaps it's not surprising, but I think this um, this shows why in organisations like Sport England, perhaps 20 years ago, they had a much stronger focus on organised sport. And now it's much more about let's just get people moving because there's only ever going to be 10, 15% of people that want to increase their physical activity through that organised sport. Yeah. And then final bullet point just reiterates the importance of costs at the moment. The 53 percent saying um, that's the most important factor when choosing which leisure facility to use and then it's facilities and offer uh, and, and followed by membership offers. So that's just the four highlights. It's mm -hmm. a wealth of information that we're getting about that wider community's attitudes and perceptions now. OK, so, Mike, I know there's something special about this and the work you've done with Simon has really made this work. So the weighting element of this, explain to us what weighting means and how weighting affected some of these results. Yeah, sure. So the purpose of the pilot community, the community survey, it was about gauging the useful as the question set. But it is, and, and, and I, obviously I now in potential issues of, of the way we do this online survey. But the key issue we were trying to address was testing the concept of, of waiting to, to better represent the local population. Mm -hmm. So whenever we go out and do a, a telephone survey or a face-to-face -face survey, we use something called quota sampling, mm -hmm. which means that we try and if we're going out and, and get a sample of a thousand people, we want to try and make sure that approximately 50% of them are male, 50% are female. We want to try and make sure that the age, right, the age uh, range spread is very similar to the actual population. Yeah. And 
the key things that we'd look at would be um, age, uh, gender, but then we may also look at things like ethnicity, if it's mm-hmm. got a, a highly um, diverse ethnic population. And we may even look at things like um, uh, long-term health conditions, stroke disabilities. So say, for example, give you an, an obvious example, say, for example, that um, 20% of local population are, come from ethnically diverse diverse mm-hmm. groups. We'd want our sample to be around 20%. Yeah. The problem is that when we move away from face-to-face or telephone or postal surveys, we just can't do that. So mm-hmm. when we move to an online survey, it's what we call self-selection. So we can't control who's going to do mm-hmm. the survey. And we know from the last few years, where we've been focusing on online surveys, that whenever you do an online survey in the community, it's, you're going to get over-representation from women mm-hmm. and from older age groups. Right. So males and younger age groups are having their views underrepresented. Right. Now, on some questions, that doesn't matter, but on some questions, it's absolutely critical. So, for example, something around uh, cleanliness, for example, how important is cleanliness? Mm-hmm. We know it's more important to older people and to women than it is to men and younger people. So there are some questions where it's going to we're going to get the wrong answers because we've got haven't got a representative yeah. um, sample coming through. So what can we do to do that? Well, most people have probably heard of the concept of waiting. Whenever you see a large survey um, report on national TV, a thousand sample who you're going to vote for in the next election, mm-hmm. that will always be weighted. And what they what it means is that we we take the um the results from the sample um that we've got through the survey and if the older age groups are underrepresented we weight them down and if right. the younger age groups are under, underrepresented we weight them up so we we take it we look at the gender and we look at the age and we increase the the weighting of the results from the underrepresented groups mm-hmm. the idea being that we'll end up after we do that weighting with results which reflect much better the actual uh, demographics of the of the wider population. Mm-hmm. And the good news is that, because um, we've just done completed a census, there's a census done in uh, 2021, yeah. that the census data that we're using is, is right up to date. So we know that whenever we go into a local authority area, we can see well, what is the age spread, what is the gender spread, what is the, um, the spread from the p- point of view of ethnic uh, diverse communities and we can then apply the weighting as long as we get a large enough sample size we can apply the weighting and it just means that it's a, a we know online surveys are the way forward this weighting concept addresses the key issues which are right. associated with it okay so my understanding mike is there's there's two versions of this survey um and i think the weighting that you've just described is in something called the the premium survey yeah. so tell us how how do we get involved if we're a local authority wanting this insight to shape our future offering from a physical activity and a moving more point of view how do we get involved and what's the difference between the two elements of the survey that we're offering mm. okay so I guess the clue is in the name. This is the Moving Communities Community Survey. So this is available via the Moving Communities platform Mm -hmm. to any English-based local authority and uh, that are signed up to the platform. And and by and large, most of most of them are. So on the Moving Communities platform, very soon the local authority will be able to go on and in their particular log on, and then when they get to their dashboard, they'll be able to download a link which gives them a free version of this online survey. And they could then take that link and they can advertise it out to their local community using the the tool sheet, which we're going to put to them. And they can get hopefully minimum 400 people, target of a thousand people to complete the survey. And they'll be able to see their baseline results live on the platform as the survey is completed. So that's quite a nice service, but Mm -hmm. what it doesn't have is the weighting and it doesn't have the ability to compare your results with national benchmarks yeah so that free service is the freemium service totally free of charge to anyone signed up for moving communities but we think that there's going to be some real value in taking what we call the premium service right the premium service gives you that weighting mechanism Mm -hmm. to address any imbalances in your sample in your sample spread but also it will allow you to see what your weighted results, how they compare 
to national weightage right. result. Okay. And, and that just means that for a lot of the questions, it will be a much better indicator of what the local community is actually is sure. actually thinking. And it allows you to put in context your results because I always use the example if say cost comes, uh, 45% of people say that cost is the main reason mm -hmm. that they don't use your local leisure centres. We just don't know if that's good or bad, right? <laughs> if, unless it's put in context. If sure. we know that the national average is 60% of people say that and your mm -hmm. local authority is at 45, then actually it's less important than we typically expect. Okay. So that freemium, that, so we've got the freemium service free of charge to anyone that wants to use it. But there's a real opportunity to upgrade to the premium and get this hand holding, but okay. also the benchmarking and the weighting. Fantastic. So have we got some contact details? Is there somebody to, that we need to contact if we're interested in doing this service? Absolutely. So there's a, a link um, with inquiry form on our website. I think the link's going to be uh, down below with this mm -hmm. presentation. And people just need to go on there fill in the basic um, inquiry form and someone yeah. will get back to them within 48 hours. In terms of time scales, we're now taking expressions of interest leading up to Christmas and the full launch of the service of the service will be in January towards the end of Jan, uh, end of January next year. Okay, excellent. Brilliant. Thanks very much for your time, Mike. Really good to catch up and thank you for the, all the work done on the uh, Moving Communities Community Survey. Take care and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Dave. Bye. Cheers now.